If you are watching this video, you are probably a doctor, nurse or prescribing healthcare professional who has just started treating leg spider veins by microsclerotherapy and you feel you need more help and guidance. This video is for you. I will take you through the essential steps to success and I will help you avoid common mistakes that beginners new to microsclerotherapy often make. Before I go further, let me confirm that microsclerotherapy is the best treatment for leg spider veins. It involves precise injection of a prescription medicine called a sclerosant into the spider veins. A healing process follows which leads to fibrosis of the veins. Essential steps towards successful microsclerotherapy are a thorough, well-documented consultation, careful selection of people suitable for microsclerotherapy, precise injection technique, support for your patients during the healing phase, assessment of results and assessment of the possible need for further treatment. So let's look at the common mistakes and let's see how we can avoid them. Mistake number one is overpromising. Overpromising that the veins will go completely, leaving blemish-free legs. During the consultation, explain that microsclerotherapy is not perfect. No treatment ever is. However, 80-90% to 90 of people are very pleased with the outcome and are satisfied with the final results of microsclerotherapy. However, up to 15% may be disappointed because the results do not meet their expectations of improvement. So during the consultation, be careful in your use of language. Use terms such as fade, improve and become less noticeable, rather than terms such as disappear and go completely. Mistake number two, poor patient selection. When you're selecting people for microsclerotherapy, be sure you know the indications and the contraindications and select healthy patients whom you can expect to heal well. Select those with isolated spider veins that are easy to see. So avoid patients with health problems and severe allergies who may not heal well or who may react adversely to the sclerosant. And as a beginner, avoid treating very fine spider veins that are difficult to see with the naked eye. Not only are these vessels difficult to inject, but these patients may actually have very high expectations that you will find very difficult to meet. Mistake number three. Extravasation. Now, successful injection results in blanching of the vessel. And injection outside the vessel, which obviously is not desirable, uh, causes bleb formation. Now, we all get blebs, but it's important that when you start, um, you recognise blebs, because they will probably occur quite frequently. Be sure you can recognise both blanching and blebs, and always stop injecting if the patient experiences pain or if you cause a bleb. And you need to be watching the tip of the needle while you're injecting to be able to identify a bleb right at the moment that it happens. Mistake number four, injecting too much sclerosant. Beginners often inject large areas of veins uh, with each injection. So instead, you should inject small volumes very slowly and under low pressure. As a beginner, avoid strong sclerosants. They may extravasate and cause ulcers. And when you do inject, blanch only small areas of leg veins uh, using multiple injection sites. Mistake number five, failure to explain what happens after microsclerotherapy. Microsclerotherapy is a process Patients must be informed that their leg veins usually look worse during the healing phase, so avoid injecting just before important social events when the patient's leg might be on show. Warn your patients about this and tell them that their spider veins may need more than one treatment session. Make sure your consent process is very well documented and that written aftercare advice is given to your patients with information about what they can expect afterwards and how they can contact you if they're at all concerned. Be sure that your patients know what to expect after treatment before you actually start the treatment. 
and if complications arise, make sure that you can recognise them and that you're available to your patients. Mistake number six, injecting too frequently. Instead, leave sufficient time for the healing process before making a judgement about the need for retreatment. Leg spider veins may continue to fade for three to six months after injection. So certainly don't retreat within six weeks. And if you're in any doubt about the need for retreatment, err on the side of leaving more time for healing. Mistake number seven, failure to take photographs. Now my final tip is always to take photographs. You and your patients may forget what the veins initially looked like. After reviewing before and after photographs, you and your patients may be pleasantly surprised just how good the improvement after treatment actually is. So there you are. Seven common mistakes and strategies to avoid them. Now I found I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing. I have a number of online resources which can help you with microsclerotherapy. So whether you want to learn microsclerotherapy as a complete beginner or whether you want to improve and learn new and helpful strategies, you'll find that my courses uh, cover all aspects of running a successful microsclerotherapy practice. So be sure to click the links in the description below. My name is Dr. Haroon Gadraj uh, of the Vein Care Academy. Thank you for watching.